We are here at Fort Apugan, or also known as Fort Santa Agata. This is a very historical site for Guam, and if you want to find out more, you can click on the link in the description below. But today, I have with me... Cheyenne Santos. And Cheyenne is here to help me test the Pentax 150mm 2.8 lens on this medium format 645Z camera. We've been shooting for about maybe 15-20 minutes. How do you like the photos so far from this camera? They look great. Just looking at it, I can mm -hmm. see all the detail, even though I guess you're shooting from far away, but the detail yes. on it is crazy. So. And I know, uh, keep in mind, this is an old lens from the film era, but just showing you the photos, zooming into 100%, I can really tell it's a very sharp lens, mm -hmm. and I'm liking the um, blurred background that I'm getting from it. And the color's not bad too. When the sun hits you, uh, the color, I think, is not too warm. Yeah, I really like the way it turn, turns out, especially with the sun. Mm -hmm. yeah, the sun lighting. <laughs> cool. We're going to continue to shoot some more, um, but do you want to tell our viewers um, any additional information about you? Um, yeah, sure. So, I am a student at the University of Guam. I have been modeling for about three years and pageant I experience <laughs> so i ran for miss universe guam 2018 mm -hmm. i made top five and i was awarded miss photogenic so. and i'm actually having a very easy time doing this photo shoot i'm just pressing the button and we're getting really awesome photos oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll keep on shooting Get to see the one. One, two, three. Can you look away at the distance? One, two, three. Some physical features about this lens. It's actually pretty small for 150 millimeter lens, 2.8. It feels well built. Doesn't feel plasticky at all. Uh, comes with the uh, lens that says Pentax at the top. And actually, in full frame terms, this is about 118 millimeters. And depth of field, field of view, it's about 2.2. So it's about a 120 f2 lens. Okay, we'll keep on shooting. Nice, we'll use the wind. Good facial expression, very nice. One, two, and three. Nice. Okay, let's look at the photos. 
Other physical features of this lens is the close focusing distance is pretty far at 3.94 feet or 4 feet, 1.2 meters. The filter thread is 67 millimeters. So as you can tell by the filter thread, this lens isn't that large. And it is pretty light at about 1.1 pounds. We're gonna continue to shoot in Cheyenne's second outfit. Summer tunnel features of this lens. Inside it has eight diaphragm blades. It has seven elements in seven groups. And of course, this being an old lens, it is screw driven focus. And it's, oh, it would help if I turn on the camera. It sounds exactly the same as the uh, 75 2.8. The focusing, not too loud. It's fine as you can hear. But comparing to the 75 2.8, um, I think the 75 2.8 may be a little bit sharper, but I am getting sharp images with this 150, but 75 to me seems um, to be more, seems to have more bite than this 150 2.8. But I gotta go home and check the files on the computer. Cheyenne is changing into her second outfit and we should be ready to shoot soon. For this scene, the audio actually wasn't working, but I was talking about the pros and cons. Some of the pros is the lens feels very balanced on a 645Z, it feels lightweight, easy to carry. Some cons are it doesn't have any weather ceiling at all, and it's good that the day I was shooting with this lens, it was very sunny. Also, there is no stabilization built in, so you gotta shoot it at good charger speeds. Other than that, uh, this lens is pretty good and it's pretty sharp at 2.8. Photo shoot with Cheyenne and we just did a YouTube live stream video a couple of minutes ago and we are looking at the photos now I'm not too sure how many photos we've taken maybe over a hundred some but a lot of good shots and for some reason um, with the order of Pentax lenses it really captures the the contrast really well in bright uh, conditions but I noticed because the sun kept on fading in and out, like right now the sun is behind the clouds, it seemed kind of, um, of course seemed really flat, but for some reason when the sun is really bright, these older Pentax lenses really bring out um, a 3D pop. Uh, Cheyenne, your opinion about the whole photo shoot? I think the photo shoot went very well. You know, the pictures, I'm only seeing it the raw version, but mm -hmm. they look really good. And I'm excited to see the final product. Mm -hmm. And I think my favorite thing about the photos is the clarity. Very clear. It's very clear, even yes. if we're taking from a far mm -hmm. away place. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, that would be my... I'm not too opinion. sure, yeah, I'm not too sure what style I should edit the photos. I'm going for a little bit more contrasty, dramatic look. Yeah. Um, but. Of course, those watching the video know I have seen the photos yeah. while we were shooting, mm -hmm. but we still haven't really decided on what kind of style we should edit the photos. But even straight out of camera, the photos are also very good. Um, maybe some of them are a little bit too cool, 
uh, not on the warm side, but we can always edit that to um, pop a little bit more. Uh, so far overall, uh, this may be the best lens to blur the background um, for the 645Z system. Of course, there are adapters. We can adapt lenses with a more shallower depth of field. But with the native uh, 645 mount, uh, in my opinion, this 152.8 turns into like a 120 f2. And with the shallow depth of field, it's really great for portraits. Uh, 3D subject is very sharp, background's really blurry, so you have the 3D uh, separation. And I can't wait to go home and check out the files on the computer. Any last words you want to say to our viewers? Mm, make sure to visit Guam if you're not from here. Yes. And thank you for having me. Oh, you're <laughs> very welcome. Thank you for joining us kind of last minute. I know I asked you a couple of days ago. Um, but thank you for helping me review this Pentax lens. Really appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> All right, let's look at some raw files. Shout out the Pentax FA645 150mm 2.8 lens. The IF and the XF data stands for internal focus. I want to look at headshots, uh, some half body shots, and full body shots, as well as sharpness and chromatic aberrations, if there is any with this lens. First picture I want to show you is Cheyenne shot wide open at 2.8. Let's zoom in one to one. And keep in mind everything is raw and edited. And to me, it is sharp, but not as sharp as the 75mm 2.8 lens for the 645Z that I just reviewed. That lens is sharper than this lens in my opinion. Um, I also did research online and others seem to agree that this lens isn't as sharp as other um, Pentax um, 645 lenses. Another example of a headshot, I'm gonna do a reset here. Also shot wide open at 2.8, zooming into Cheyenne's left eye. It is sharp and you can see the detail, but if you wanna make it sharper, all you need to do is just increase sharpness and light room to about a 40, go to about 70, and you can see everything just comes to life. You can see every single eyelash in her eyes and the detail in skin texture and eyebrows is very nice and the bokeh with this lens as you can see it's super smooth very smooth with um, headshots as you can see here previous picture the background just melted away bringing on highlights it just melted away to nothing um, this um, quarter body half body shot again super smooth bokeh very nice Let's look at some half body shots here. I do notice that when shooting half body, I'm gonna do a reset, okay. Shooting half body uh, wide open at 2.8, it does seem to get a little bit sharper. So this seems to be of a sharper image um, than we're shooting closer distances with this lens for some reason. Another example, yes, this is shot, I'll do a reset. Shot 2.8. Yeah, to me it's pretty sharp. We can increase sharpness again. 63, 70 becomes super sharp. Uh, let's check for, or let's do a full body. So an edited full body. Uh, Cheyenne was squinting because the sun was directly on her. But further distances away, um, to me it seems sharper. And there's also like a slight glow with this lens I noticed. And it's fine because if you want to shoot portraits, um, most people would argue that portrait lenses shouldn't be that sharp, super sharp. But this lens is sharp, but not as sharp as some of the other lenses that I've tried, like the Pentax 55 2.8 and the 75 2.8. Um, but if you do edit the photo, like this is an edited photo, it is extremely sharp, edited. You can see all the detail, the skin texture, and uh, Cheyenne's eyes and lips very nice and this is stopped down just a little bit 3.2 so if you do stop it down of course it's going to get extremely sharp uh, again bokeh is very smooth in the highlights here and with um, chromatic aberrations uh, sun is hitting Cheyenne from behind very little purple fringing that I see very well controlled I had the lens hood on um, I wasn't able to get any extreme conditions with them. Um, this is an edited photo. 
of uh, shooting with the sun or against the sun. Everything seems very well controlled. So this is shot farther away at 3.2 on edited. Sharpening is at 40. And it, it is very sharp once you start to stop down with 3.2 F4. But again, look at the bokeh. It's very smooth. Very great um, subject to background separation. Overall, I really love this lens as a portrait lens. And look, even a full body shot um, in this edited photo. The background just melts away. Super smooth. It looks like a painting almost. It's a 150 uh, compression, but in full frame terms, it's equivalent to about 118. So you get a field of view of 118 millimeters, but a compression of 150 lens. The 2.8 will always be a 2.8 uh, amount of light coming in, but the shallow depth of field will be equivalent to about a 2.2 or F2. So you're getting like an F2 field of view. Of the depth of field uh, this lens is going to stay in my bag uh, for a while i still have my lumix g9 if you are wondering that uh, wondering that's my main camera but i did pick up this 645z um, as my um, camera that i would like to use for portraits so i think it's a pretty good combo that i have a uh, small sensor for traveling uh, doing events uh, light work and then if you need to get serious about portraits i can always break out the 645z Thank you for watching Guam Photography and as always please subscribe.